Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter in this video. I hope you are uh, healthy, you are creative, spending time in your studio a lot, being less online and more <laughs> in the studio. And uh, today you will see me painting this uh, study on uh, Peter Paul Rubens and uh, the portrait he painted uh, uh, of his uh, daughter. And it's a really beautiful, amazing portrait because not only of uh, the the gaze and uh, the um, the subject uh, that he's using, but also because of uh, the handling of the brush strokes, uh, the bold handling and the freestyle of painting this uh, this portrait. So, um, if you are interested interested in seeing how I'm painting this, stay with me. Uh, as you see, first I'm doing this underpainting on uh, a canvas, a canvas that I have prepared with an acrylic uh, gesso and uh, I have sealed then with this uh, grey color. This uh, grey color helps me both uh, um, see better the shadows and the lights uh, whereupon uh, I will paint uh, later and uh, also it um, seals the gesso, it makes gesso lose its uh, absorbency so uh, later on when, when I will uh, add the oil uh, it will not lose its uh, uh, shininess, its brilliance. So as you see now I'm, I will switch to oil as my medium. Uh, the underpainting was uh, painted with acrylic color very loosely and very relaxed just to define the areas of uh, shadows and uh, lights. And uh, now using a limited, a relatively limited palette of uh, titanium white, uh, cobalt blue, cadmium red and yellow, brown, uh, sienna brown, alizarin red, uh, some green and some ivory black. Mm. To me this is um, essential palette. Uh, I will start by painting the areas of uh, the shadows and uh, um, trying to find the areas where uh, the light, let's say, fight with uh, the shadows and uh, um, all of this. I'm thinning, I'm thinning down my color just with uh, turpentine oil. And uh, at this point I'm uh, just exploring uh, the, um, the hue, let's say, the chroma and uh, the values of uh, these uh, shadowy areas, see how dark uh, they are and uh, I want to keep this uh, contrast by with the light by imagining how things later on will be when I will add my shapes of uh, light on this uh, portrait. So little by little I observe on my reference photo that uh, Rubens uses these uh, grey bluish uh, tones uh, um, in uh, the areas where light uh, will meet shadow on a face and uh, this will uh, make the portrait being more visually more interesting and uh, very loosely very relaxed I will uh, paint I will apply these uh, gray stones on my painting it's important to, uh, <laughs> when we paint, to be in a good uh, mood, to not uh, block ourselves with uh, negative thoughts of uh, um, doing the right uh, thing. I, I find that when I'm painting these uh, studies, I, I have some negative thoughts uh, about uh, the process, uh, saying to myself that uh, uh, probably the old masters didn't use this uh, exact technique, uh, method to paint, but uh, still uh, that's why these are studies. I'm trying to um, explore uh, these techniques myself and uh, of course I wasn't there when uh, the masters painted their portraits so I'm trying to guess and uh, do the best I can to recreate these uh, these um, masterpieces. Now uh, as you see I am uh, um, painting uh, the first uh, a first layer of uh, light and um, here it's very nice how the grey acrylic color that I have uh, as my base color behaves with uh, this first uh, light, how it creates this beautiful um, 
called uh, hues that uh, uh, really define uh, directly the volume of the head and uh, create this beautiful effect. Um, let me just say that this uh, study was painted uh, alla prima uh, in uh, one sitting, uh, let's say. I haven't waited for uh, any layers to dry for a couple of days, so this um, was a way I believe uh, Rubens has painted this because um, this portrait has such a freshness and uh, directness that uh, uh, it could be painted, achieved only with uh, an alla prima approach. So after having um, defined my uh, areas, shapes of light uh, and uh, shadow, and I've done some basic uh, blending on it, I realized by observing my photo, my reference photo, that uh, the only way to proceed from now on is to uh, fully paint the eyes and um, use a smaller uh, brush, a smaller uh, softer brush to paint uh, as much in detail uh, the eyes as uh, possible. I've decided that in order to do this I have to um, take my time and really go slowly painting the eyes. Sometimes uh, when we paint these studies um, they are painted in such a mastery that uh, we think that uh, uh, the masters painted them with a few brush strokes and in many cases this is true but uh, observing the the eyes here in this portrait and in many others i realized that uh, uh, definitely these masters must have uh, uh, slowed down um, when they were painting things in uh, such uh, detail it's impossible to to paint um, something like this very quickly, very, you know, they were masters and uh, they were very masterful in handling uh, color, but definitely they had to slow down uh, in some areas and uh, give all their attention to those areas. So I'm doing uh, the same thing here. And uh, I try to paint these uh, the eyes as best uh, as uh, I can. I want to fully paint those and um, not to return later on uh, on them. As uh, this will uh, free me from uh, um, giving all my attention to the rest of uh, the face uh, later on. Here I'm using a brush that is uh, suitable for uh, watercolor and uh, tempera. It's a soft brush and um, uh, it really does the job. It's uh, in detail. Always when you paint these studies, try to ask yourselves if the tools that you use, the brushes and everything, do feel comfortable in your hand, if they do the job and uh, if uh, you feel they are completely under your control. Many times um, we just uh, suffer and uh, by using uh, materials, using tools that uh, they, uh, they don't feel that uh, they obey our, uh, our uh, commands. So, and we just suffer, it's not enjoyable. It's not something that uh, uh, gives nice results. So uh, be in touch with uh, what's happening while you are painting and if uh, your brushes and the, um, the consistency of the color feel comfortable and uh, nice. This uh, study really was enjoyable for me because uh, it was uh, uh, the handle of the brush stroke is uh, so much uh, freer than say uh, the handle of the color when we use sfumato, and um, this allowed me to uh, to complete this uh, portrait in one sitting, and uh, really gave this uh, the directness that uh, and the beauty, the charm of uh, an alla prima painting. Now I am. Uh, playing with color a little bit, adding uh, more warm tones that uh, uh, give me also a sense of uh, volume, uh, 
they are warmer but also darker in value and this can create a very interesting um, a very interesting uh, effect on uh, a painting I will not uh, go darker on the cheek by adding uh, let's say black or something grey but uh, I will darken the cheek by adding uh, orange and uh, red and uh, this uh, you see how directly gives us this very typical um, characteristic of flesh tones of the Baroque uh, and uh, Renaissance uh, period. It's very very uh, powerful and uh, as you see this uh, portrait uh, already um, already has something of the uh, original. I've come to realize that uh, no matter um, how we try to copy these masters, we will never be able to really copy those because those were original uh, works. Uh, we have uh, this is the one reason. Second reason is uh, we don't fully know and use their techniques and uh, uh, tools, their uh, colors, uh, and uh, all this. Third, we have a different nervous system than uh, each of these master painters. We have uh, each one has uh, um, their own uh, nervous and master system, and uh, it's of course. Uh, um, very very hard to create something completely uh, identical but um, still uh, th we have to see those as uh, an amazing exercise that uh, will uh, help us understand how um, good painting looks like and it will um, it will hone our painting skills and uh, I definitely um, suggest my students uh, to do these studies no matter how the final result resembles to the original um, etc. So here as you see I'm proceeding with adding uh, uh, one layer of uh, light one more layer of light on uh, the painting and this will give uh, also more of the three dimensions and uh, will give more of the volume that uh, we see on this uh, head. It's almost like as I was painting this, I almost felt like I was painting some of the fruits, or the peaches, that, uh, the oranges that Cezanne has painted later on. It was very, very refreshing for me to use this freestyle uh, uh, painting while I was doing uh, this. I am, uh, um, uh, since this is an La Prima painting, I'm doing uh, the, I'm doing the, I'm thinning down my colors with turpentine oil at this point. I don't use any extra linseed oil. And uh, you can see now how uh, having uh, finished, let's say, with uh, the eyes or being, you know, bring, uh, bringing the eyes to a level that is uh, satisfying uh, really is uh, freeing to, to me to paint the rest of this. And um, it helps me understand where I want this portrait to, to stop, to end, where I want to bring this. So keep this in mind as a tip. You can always, you know, paint the eyes, an area, finish an area, and this will, will uh, be your, uh, um, your point of reference to, to tell you where the rest of the painting can be finished. As you see, after a point, uh, I don't use any any black at all. I've used my my black as um, a help uh, in the shadow areas, uh, the pupils uh, of the eyes, etc. But uh, after that, uh, in this portrait, I'm not using any uh, black uh, at all. And uh, this uh, helps uh, give this uh, rich in color, in chroma, in saturation, uh, these uh, volumes on uh, flesh. 
instead of using uh, black that will grayish uh, too much of the flesh. When I add uh, uh, white, uh, the color loses uh, a lot of its uh, saturation. Of course, uh, it gains in brightness and uh, value, but uh, white uh, makes color lose its saturation. Uh, imagine now if uh, I could add also black, it would completely lose the saturation become something else so i don't want uh, something like that uh, here this is a very very colorful and powerful uh, portrait that uh, uh, rubens for sure hasn't used uh, many grayish uh, tones on the light area of the flesh now, as I'm proceeding, of course, I've said that uh, I'm using uh, turpentine to thin down my colors, but uh, as I'm proceeding and adding color, I will uh, gradually add some uh, drops of uh, um, linseed oil because uh, this will uh, uh, smoothen the color, uh, this will uh, um, help me add these extra uh, layers of uh, light that you see me painting right now and uh, um, it can uh, I can also use this uh, linseed oil almost as uh, a glaze I will use this uh, uh, very very thin I will use a color that is thin down with uh, linseed oil um, even though I'm using uh, this is a la prima and everything is uh, wet at this point um, with the right uh, use of the brush, a very gentle use of the brush, I'm able to apply layer upon layer of color, smoothen this with uh, thin down uh, um, with linseed oil color and create uh, um, these uh, transitions that can be smooth, uh, as smooth as I want them. Uh, again, I don't aim for something, for a sfumato effect uh, here, but uh, uh, I aim for some uh, uh, loose, uh, some um, smooth transitions uh, in some areas. In some others, I want uh, my color to be more abrupt, these transitions to be more abrupt and more uh, um, painterly, let's say. I don't know if this makes sense and uh, of course uh, you can just uh, uh, mute my comments and uh, uh, and just let the video speak to you. You can find uh, this full tutorial on my Patreon page and um, I really want to thank my supporters there for um, allowing me to make these uh, videos here on YouTube with uh, their support. It would be really impossible to, to spend uh, this time to do these uh, studies and uh, share with you on YouTube. So um, thank you, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You can check my page there. Uh, we do those live streams and you can find uh, many full tutorials on oil painting, on um, egg tempera painting, uh, some techniques of the masters uh, from the past. Um, really grateful for all your support. And of course, you can find this uh, tutorial uh, there uh, um, on my Patreon uh, page, uh, Painting the Light. So, as you see now, um, I'm pretty much going back and forth, uh, applying some uh, uh, light, uh, going darker, and uh, um, to me it seems, <laughs> this portrait seems uh, very charming, and uh, I consider this um, a successful, uh, let's say, uh, study, but uh, another thing that we painters struggle uh, with is that we really can, are not always very uh, you know, objective, and sometimes we see something and we are completely mesmerized and seduced by, by it and say, okay, this was perfect. And uh, then we revisit this same painting after a few months and we see this and uh, we really see it under a different eye and we find um, things that we can, uh, we could have painted uh, differently uh, or dislike. So, 
I'm not always uh, trusting this, uh, uh, you know, uh, my eyes um, regarding to my paintings. Uh, I have to let things uh, cool down a little bit, some days or some weeks, and um, I will revisit these paintings and then I will give my final, uh, you know. Um, so, yeah, T let me know if you have similar issues with uh, critiquing your own work. Again, the important, uh, this is something that I always say to my students, uh, the important thing is to spend time in the studio and um, no matter what the result is, uh, we will gain something, we will uh, learn better the behavior of the materials and so that's uh, our gain. So. As you see, little by little, of course, uh, I have to say how amazed I always am by those masters, how their work uh, was so amazing, so great. It's really, I don't know, a miracle that they could achieve such beauty and uh, perfection back uh, in those days. I guess their devotion, their experience was uh, um, different. So, yeah. I don't think uh, they would spend uh, so much time uh, watching uh, TV series online or on so social media, etc. They would, you know, they would uh, be more in the studio and uh, that's a great time to to keep our uh, balance and uh, to be healthy and to really live the joy of uh, painting. So anyway, this was my study on this face by, by Rubens. I hope uh, um, you got something out of this, you got some inspiration to be in the studio and uh, also that you like the final result of this uh, study. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you think, uh, what you are painting. And uh, join, uh, if you like, the community in uh, Patreon. Thank you so much. I will uh, see you soon in another video. Bye.